Hi boys and girls, it's Mr. Wassman, and today we are going to explore the world of traditional addition algorithms. Uh, that's a fancy way of saying we're going to add. Okay, so we are in our math journal on page 16, uh, unit 1, lesson 7. And before we get started, let's take a peek at this uh, symbol at the top. It looks like uh, a Ghostbuster symbol. This is the universal symbol for no, and anything behind that uh, little diagonal bar means you can't do that. And for this activity, it means don't use calculators. The purpose of doing the addition problems is not so much finding the answer, but it is practicing the skills and, more importantly, learning why the answer would be true. Okay? So here's what we're going to be doing. It says, make an estimate, write a number model to show your thinking. Try to solve each problem using U.S. traditional addition. Compare your answer with your estimate to see whether your answer makes sense. Okay? So, the one thing about the, the way that they lay out these problems is they give you plenty of scratch uh, workspace, but the first thing they ask you to do is to make an estimate. And when you see this problem right here, your uh, initial uh, inclination is to just jump in and add. But what we really want you to do is to create a rounded estimate first. So let's get into this problem here. Now it says down here, what's your estimate? But I find it's more useful to write your rounded model to the right. So I'm just going to draw a little arrow right here. 49 rounded to the nearest 10. Well, that's one away from 50, so it must round up to 50. 33 rounded to the nearest 10. Well, that would fall between 30 and 40. The halfway point between 30 and 40 is, of course, 35. And since 33 is less than 35, I'm going to round down. So my estimated problem is 50 plus 30. And since uh, 5 plus 3 gives me 8, 5 tens plus 3 tens is going to give me a 10. So that's my estimated problem. Now it says write the estimate on the line below, but you can just draw an arrow like so. That's good enough for me. Uh, so now we actually have to add 49 plus 33. So the whole purpose of us adding 50 plus 30 is to, t to uh, realize that my answer is going to be around 80. Maybe a little bigger, maybe a little smaller. So let's calculate. 9 plus 3, that's going to give us 12. I'm going to carry the 1. 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. So my actual answer is 82. That's pretty close to 80. Because if I were to round 82 to the nearest 10, that would give me 80. So not bad. But that was an easy problem because it only dealt with two-digit numbers. So let's look at a larger one. Let's try number 5. 538 plus 928. Okay, so again, I need to create an, uh, an estimated problem. This time, I might want to round to the nearest 100 because both numbers are in the hundreds. So 538, is that closer to 500 or 600? So I might utilize that roller coaster model. 500 is one end of the hill. 600 would be the other end. So the real question is, what's the halfway mark? Well, that would be 550. And 532 is less than that, because 32 is less than 50. Oh, that's actually 38. That's an easy fix. So 538 would round down to 500. Okay, so again, off to the side, I'm going to just write my problem. So 538 rounds down to 500. 928 would also round down to 900. So my problem is now 500 plus 900. Now with zeros in a place value, I just need to bring those zeros down to hold the place value. Zeros are a space saver, a placeholder. So really all I'm doing here is adding 5 plus 9. Well, 5 plus 9 is 14. So my answer, my estimated answer, is going to be 1,400 or 1,400. And again, since I'm not picky, you can just say, here's my estimate and draw an arrow. 
So now what I need to do is I need to do some um, adding that's going to involve some regrouping. Okay, so let's look here. 8 plus 8. Well, 8 plus 8 is going to give me 16. So I'm going to put the 6 below and put the 10 above the 10's place value. 10 plus 30 is 40. 40 plus 20 is going to give me 60. So there's no regrouping there. And then I'm adding 5 plus 9. Well, 5 plus 9 is 14, as we found out in the estimated model. So my actual answer is 1,466, or 1,466. Now, if I look at my estimated model, 1,400 is not what 1,466 would round to. It would be closer to 1,500. But again, this estimate is good enough to get us close to what the answer is supposed to be. Okay, now you could have rounded to the nearest 10, and that would have probably given you a more accurate answer. So let's do that. The nice thing about this uh, whiteboard app is that it provides me as much space as I need. I can make my worksheet as small as I want, and look at all that white space I could use. Well, that's too indulgent. Let's get back to a reasonable size. So I'm going to write down... 500, well, let's not do yellow, let's use black, 538 and 928, I'm going to round those to the nearest 10, okay, so just for a moment, let's ignore 7 to 9, okay, so if I round 38 to the nearest 10, I'm asking myself, is that closer to 30 or 40, well, 38 is bigger than 30. Five, so that would round up to the next 10, which would be 40. Same would happen with 28. 28 is bigger than 25, so that would round up to 30. So now I've got 40 and 30, but i got to remember to add back in the 5 and the 9. So now I'm going to add 540 plus 930. And when you do the math, 0 plus 0, 4 plus 3... 5 plus 9, that gives you 1,470, or 1,470. Now, when I compare 1,470 to 1,466, that is a closer estimate. In fact, if you were to round 1,466 to the nearest 10, it would round to 1,470. So there you go. You can choose two different ways to round uh, a number based on how big the place value is. Since we were dealing with numbers in the hundreds, you had a choice between rounding to the nearest hundred, like we did first, or rounding to the nearest ten, like we did here. Try the rest of these problems on your own, including number seven, the try this one um, and uh, let's see how you do. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, use your Canvas inbox or have your parents email me. Otherwise, we will talk again soon, friends. Thanks.